On today's show, Brandon McVeigh heads downtown to a prosper landmark that's going to be seeing big changes in the near future. And we share something good as we sit down with a volunteer service dog raiser who's changing the community for the better. These stories and much more coming up on this edition of HTN Daily. Good afternoon, Rock Hill. Today is Friday, May 21st, and might I add, Rock Hill's very first last day of school, and for some of us, our last day of high school. Yeah, Madison, you and I are seniors, and it's really just hard to believe that graduation is so close and that the start of summer is really just hours away. It's so crazy to think about. Yeah, I don't really think it's, like, hit me yet. The only thing I'm worrying right now is downloading all of my files off my school drive. But enough talk about the future. Let's just focus on the present and the great show we have in store for all of y'all today. Live from Studio 1060, I'm Madison Wells. And I'm Grant Johnson. PISD email accounts are closed for all graduating seniors immediately following the end of the school year. This means that all files or accounts for applications linked to Prosper ISD email addresses will be lost. Students can use the Google Takeout feature to download the contents of their drive to prevent the loss of their files. Class shirts are now on sale for the class of 2022, 2023, 2024, and 2025 in My School Bucks. The designs are on your screen, and if ordered by June 7th, they will be available for pickup at Student Tours and Blue Hawk Camp. Yearbooks are here and are being distributed all day today in the book room located next to the school store, The Nest. Seniors can grab their books 8.30 to 9.30 today and other grades can grab their books after 9.30. If you're not able to pick up today, summer pickup is available May 24th through the 27th in the front office. A photo is making its rounds on prosperous social media pages showing over a dozen teenagers climbing a ladder onto one of the silos in downtown. To avoid this potential hazard, the new owners of the silos plan to tear them down. That is, of course, until the community stepped in. Brandon McVeigh reports. There's no question that the silos are a monumental part in prosperous history, having been built when the area was still known as Richland. They have been giving businesses and people the small town, big heart feel that many seek while moving to Prosper. Living here for 15 years, I think, you know, it's a symbol of our small town and it gives the whole downtown a different feeling of it's an important thing to keep them there and keep that history a part of our town. With continued development in and around the area, residents will see a change in the downtown landscape. The Mayhart family has been selling off much of their land holdings over the last few years as they are relocating their egg farm to Oklahoma. Their property that holds the eight silos was put up for sale and purchased by Jerry Jones's Blue Star Land Company. Blue Star planned to tear down all eight, but that's when the city decided to take action, purchasing three for 690000 and local business owner Mike Pettis purchased one as well. So there was a significant investment and the town has said, you know what, we've kind of hit the limit of what we can budget from a taxpayer's dollar to solidify that. And so to get four more, which are the bigger ones, which have greater safety, uh, I would be, if I was guessing, I would say a million plus minimum to be able to purchase the land, the silos and fortify them. With a safety threat the silos pose, the town plans to remove any hazards such as laddering and seal all openings. The community has responded to the town's rescue efforts with praise, but also with some criticism, wondering if it is enough to save the landscape. Even though the silos have not been used for years, the downtown area has used their presence for inspiration, business, and marketing. It's obviously a developing area and, you know, things are going to be changing, but I still think it's important, especially in our downtown, to keep, you know, a little piece of our history and our, you know, small town feel. Personally, I'd love to see them stay, but property rights in Texas, the owner has the right to do with it. We've purchased all that we can. Maybe the community can come together and raise the funds to see if we can save them. For HTN Daily, I'm Brandon McVeigh. There have been many conversations about creating a GoFundMe to raise the additional funds, but the remaining four silos would cost over $1 million, so we'll keep you updated on their efforts. With the nation starting to recover from COVID, bigger events with more people are being held safely. A nonprofit food pantry called Neighbors Nourishing Neighbors, located in Prosper, hosted a car meet called Hot Dogs and Hot Rods Saturday. Anka Hankey shared the memories before the miles. 
Uh, it was the most exhilarating time of my life. Whether it's a trip to see the newest Corvette or to be taken back to the 50s, there's a car for everyone at Hot Dogs and Hot Rods. But behind every license plate, there's a story. I bought this car from my neighbor in California in 1968 and he had purchased it new. From the date that he bought it, I knew that I wanted that car. Every time he ran, every time he drove it down the street, I mean, I was like in awe. Having this car for over five decades, not everything has stayed in pristine shape. My dad, before he passed away, he and I worked on it in California. And it was just kind of a bonding time for he and I. and. Uh, uh, just treasure those moments. While there is a charm to seeing a car with so many years behind its bumper, even the new cars have a story. I grew up in Michigan in the 50s and 60s when Detroit was king of the car world. And my dad bought and sold cars and I was the oldest kid. So I was always holding the flashlight and chasing parts. With years under his belt, Larry has swapped out his fixer upper for a new one. Most of us old guys like uh, the old cars and we think about the ones that we shouldn't have sold but i wanted something with a warranty and i have a big toolbox tiled in my head but i don't want to turn wrenches anymore that's fun those are fun but this is more appropriate for what i want to do with every mile driven for each car there's a story along with it for htn daily i'm monica hankey there are over 60 cars and 200 people participating in Neighbors Nourishing Neighbors considers Hot Dogs and Hot Rods one of their largest fundraisers of the year. When Rogers Middle School students were told to just let it go and give up their hopes on putting on a musical, Rock Hills Theater Department stepped in at the last minute to bring Frozen Junior to life. Kyla Lewis reports. From costumes to props or even memorizing lines, bringing Frozen Junior to the stage is a challenge that Rogers Middle School experienced firsthand. When they lost their director due to medical leave, Rock Hill director Sierra Haney was there. The parents and the kids were obviously really upset about it and, you know, wanted to do the show. And they sent me a list of everything that needed to be done and they were like, can you do this in a week and a half? And I was like, no. And then uh, they said, well, what if we push the performance and you could do it at Rock Hill. And I was like, maybe. And then um, pretty much after that, it was, I'm gonna do this. Chipping in to help with running lights or sound or even joining the cast, the high school students also played a role in making this production happen. We actually have a very small cast as it is. A lot of the actors are playing a character and then another person's playing that same character. Um, so the ensemble is really small, so I wasn't comfortable pulling somebody up from the ensemble. And then I was like, you know what? The rights and royalties allow us to use high school students, so I'm just going to pull one of my high school students and put them in this little role. Um, and Ethan was perfect for it. Ethan said he was happy to help out his old middle school in a way he never expected. So my part in the play is King Agnar, um, the king of the royal family in Frozen 1. And soon enough, after a few scenes in the show I pass away in the shipwreck but it's a really fun role to develop in the only two weeks I have. For HDN Daily I'm Kyla Lewis. Frozen Jr. premiered in the auditorium last night and might I say my Twitter had some raving reviews this morning <laughs> on it. Orchestra held their end of the year concert this past week where they honored the seniors. I got a chance to sit down with senior Paulo Margo, a student who has not let his autism hold him back in his musical abilities. Instruments are a way of expression, to help people open their minds and experience something out of their comfort zone. Paul Armargo, a student with autism, has used this to his advantage while finding his love of music from a young age. I first played the drums when I was in the Philippines when I was about three or four years old, I believe, just before we moved to the USA. And then I started playing the viola in Kentucky five years ago. When moving to Prosper's sophomore year, he was a percussionist in band and then switched to orchestra's senior year. To him, music is more than a hobby, it also helps him in his everyday life. I think music helps Paulo by helping him stay focused, uh, really driving him. It's a very positive influence on him, um, definitely in his personal life, uh, outside of school, and in his schoolwork. With autism, Paul uses his characteristic of repetitive behavior to make him a stronger musician. And while communication can be a challenge, he can express himself freely through music. He has so much perseverance and so much heart. He tries his hardest at everything he does, um, and he just lives and breathes music, whether it's outside of school, at school, or at his church. I love music because, it's, because I grew up with it. 
I just I just love the drum beats and and noise that they make. Paul is going to join the Prepare the Prosper program as part of his post-graduation plans. Canine Companions for Independence motto is help is a four-legged word. That is, of course, because for people with disabilities, the help they need often arrives on four legs. I sat down with a volunteer from Frisco who raises the puppies that provide hope for those who need it. Shake. Yes, good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Riley's time with Gayla is just the beginning of a long journey she'll take to become a skilled companion. So I was looking for something to volunteer that wasn't going to take a lot of time away from my family. When her home emptied after her kids left for college, Gayla Crookshank searched for a way to volunteer and found it in the Canine Companions for Independence organization as a puppy raiser. So as a puppy raiser, I have uh, go to a training about once a week. We do it all online right now. We have about 30 commands to train her with. So we do the tough part of raising the dog so when they go to professional training they're all appropriate and then they learn the advanced skills. When puppy raisers need someone to watch the puppy they head to a puppy sitter like Kayla Margolis. Kayla brings Riley out in the community when she's visiting and educates the younger generation on service animals. Oh well, they always just like oh my gosh like I love your dog and I was like thank you and then I would just tell her like what she's for and like what she's doing and like her purpose and they always ask me, oh my gosh, like, is it going to be so hard to give her up? And I'm like, yes, but you have to remember her main goal is to be helping someone that needs it. After the puppy leaves the razor, they're then matriculated into the professional training program, where they'll spend six to nine months learning more challenging commands. And if they graduate from the program, which only 50% of dogs do, they will then be matched with an individual and given to them at no cost. The matching process at Canine Companions is super important and super thorough. Um, we actually have a 98 to 99% success rate of our matches, and it is because we're looking so closely at what's going to be the best fit. Um, we don't want to just place a dog anywhere. We want it to be a successful working team for the next eight to 10 years that that dog is going to be placed with them. So um, this is my second dog. My first dog was Orenda the fourth. So she is with a young lady who is a 14-year-old a uh, young lady in a robotic chair. She has spinal muscular atrophy. The girl is a genius. She needs something to be picked up. She can go get that for her. And Aranda's just her very best friend. Anyone over 18 is eligible to become a puppy raiser and you don't need any special skills. Just be prepared to open your home and heart for the puppy and also prepare yourselves for the tough goodbye a year and a half later, knowing the dog has a job to do. Both the softball and baseball teams have made it into their own regional tournaments. Connor Fuchs is in studio with an update on the team's attempts at leaving a legacy. Thank you, Maddie. I'm Connor Fuchsa, and this is your season pass to all Rock Hill sports. Softball played their first game in the best of three series against Hallsville on Wednesday. The first game in the series did not go as planned with the Blue Hawks taking the loss 5-0. Game 2, Varsity came out hot, building up an early 3-1 lead off of a 2-RBI single from Cat Luna. The Blue Hawks were leading going into the 7th after going up 4-3 in the 6th, but the top of the 7th was a harsh for the Blue Hawks allowing seven runs that led to Rock Hill falling 10-4 and being eliminated from playoff contention. It was a strong season for the girls with Cat Luna being named a DFW Player of the Week as well as at one point Rock Hill being ranked second in all of 5A. For a first year team, winning the district and making it to the regional semifinals is an impressive feat. Now softball was not the only team with some playoff action over the past week. The baseball team matched up against district rivals Lovejoy yet again in the regional quarterfinals. Just like the girls, Game 1 did not go as planned with Rock Hill taking a hard 6-0 loss. Game 2 was a lot closer, coming down to the wire. Josh Livingston had a great game, batting in two RBIs. However, this was not enough for the Blue Hawks, with a final score 4-5 in favor of the Leopards. Lovejoy showed out to be Rock Hill's kryptonite, sweeping the season series 4-0 throughout the entire season. Baseball did, not, did have some big accomplishments like Josh Livingston being named a THSBCA All-Star and making it all the way to quarterfinals as a first-year team. While baseball and softball season ended just before state, the state golf tournament was held this week in Austin. Now Robin Lieber finds out how, despite his age and class, one freshman golfer put his way into state. Freshman Ryan Shelberg feels at home on the fairways. When I was six, I was like, I kind of like this game, and I started playing all the time. All my friends were playing baseball and football, and I quit all their sports to just pursue this dream. A dream that has led to his first year on varsity and 5A state qualifier. On the first hole, you usually ask how old you are, and every time they're like, oh, you're a freshman, and they kind of like, 
like, oh, he's not going to do anything. And then I just kind of plug away at him, just beat him. Preparing for such an important moment can bring many nerves and emotions, which is why Ryan's coaches work to keep his routine consistent. So Coach Rumsey uh, is my assistant. He and I really kind of talked about not changing um, how Ryan was prepared for any other tournament up to this point. Um, you know, you don't want to add that added pressure of state uh, when there already is that natural pressure that you put on yourself. So we've kept his routine and his schedule the same. His practice days are the same. His days that he lifts are the same. Um, and so in, in reality, we haven't changed anything at all uh, as far as his practice schedule. Ryan had five first place wins and one second place finish in the regular season. At State, he finished 24th overall and the top freshman of the tournament. Um, I didn't play so well in State this year, um, but it happens. It's golf. It's all up to you. No, you can't rely on anybody else. Um, next year, I plan to enjoy the moment more and not be so serious about the whole thing and just enjoy what I'm doing. Ryan plans to share his State experience with his teammates as they prepare for next season. For Season Pass, I'm Bronwyn Lyra. That's all for this sports update. Stay up to date by following us on social media at Rock Hill Media for exclusive content and sideline reports. Back to you, Grant. That's all for today's show. For HTN Daily, I'm Grant Johnson. And I'm Madison Wells. Have a great summer, Bluehawks, and don't forget, mask up and rock on.